Well, Phil, well into pre-season now. Uh, in fact, most of the way through it, in some way. So, how, how's it going? Um, it's going uh, very well, to tell you the truth. It's going um, in the right direction, shall we say. Uh, what I mean by that is players' fitness levels. Uh, that's the most important part. Uh, the second most important part is not getting injuries, if we can avoid that. And it's very difficult to when you're playing games. And the, the games have been fairly competitive, to be fair, in different ways. You know, we've had physical games where we've played against strong teams like Tamworth. Um, then we are, we've had technical games like the one against Cardiff, you know, which was on uh, a fantastic surface. I have to say the Telford game was, again, one of them on a fantastic surface. We've sampled what um, some of the surfaces are going to be like next year with Tamworth's um, AstroTurf and then we had Michelover's AstroTurf as well. And then we had the local <coughs> um, hospitality of Droitwich. So in terms of games, it's been a, a quite a tidy pre-season. You know, you can say if you look at results, which I don't, um, you can say we're moving in the right direction. But I think pre-season is all about fitness. I think pre-season is all about making sure that we we survive the six weeks of hard work and and try and get the players in that robust robust mindset more than anything else. Not the not the robust physical asset, but the robust mindset of being able to start the first game and play 46 next year in what is known commonly as a, a brutal league but I've heard that saying so many times you know we understand what it's all about you know that you know the, the conference uh, or whichever you know the national league the national league north or south they're all you know tough games and games with men who are you know they're not shrinking violets they're going to go through challenges and come up with the ball if they can, if they possibly can do legally and if they can't they'll do it Ill illegally but we know that that's a deal you know it's it's not a problem um, but we've we've had a few young players um, that have joined the senior players, which has been great for them. It's a great experience for the academy academy kids. Uh, we've had five or six of them train with us every day. Uh, it'll be time to fine tune that now, you know, and get down to the first team squad, as it were, per se, whether that be 20, 21, 22 play, players. Um, and we've also had trailers who have come, and you know, one or two have been successful. Uh, one or two, hopefully, we can still get get signed up. Um, but the most important part was the integration of the um, seven players that we signed. You know, the new players, and I think every one of them have have contributed in some way, shape, or form, both tactically, technically, physically, mentally. They've improved us no end, in my in my uh, humble opinion, from last season. But I only had 18 games last year. You know, I didn't have the full season, and the full season is important. You know, you you've got to have that. Sound of sound mind for to get through 46 games uh, and come out with a winning mentality, and I think that's what the, the seven players that we brought in. I think that's what they'll bring to the camp. Whenever I speak to managers this time, they also about getting the spine of the side right. Uh, and clearly, you've got Christian Dibble and Gold with a cracking season last season. You brought in Paul Downing, yeah, and half a lot of experience there. Yeah. Luke Summerfield, David Davis in the midfield. So that spine's coming together. Are you still looking for another front player? Yes, we are. Um, we were very close to getting a front player uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday this week, uh, and that unfortunately fell by the wayside for for various reasons. There's all sorts of reasons when you're trying to sign a player. Um, one of the biggest reasons is that you have to be attractive to that player. You know, as a club, as a manager, as a as a style of football, um, it has to fit the bill on, on numerous occasions on on, on a number of points. Um, both from their perspective and our perspective, and you know, there's a lot goes into it. And there's an awful lot that play, you know, supporters don't actually see the piecing together of that jigsaw. And we were very close, as I say, on Tuesday, Wednesday. That fell by the wayside, but we'll move on to the next one, which we always do. We have to remain robust as managers, you know, and understand where the problems are in the field of play, and try and, you know, not paper the cracks because we we're not about that. We're we're about piecing together this picture, and hopefully, that picture will be finished come the 10th of August and ready for action playing for Kidderminster Harriers but yeah th there's probably one maybe two players still to come in uh, but with that in mind you've got to think about finances you know and more so at this level than you do have to have to above but finances at the top end and finances here are, are all about you know you've got so much to spend and that's all you can spend um, so you know, I'm, I'm respectful of that. I'm respectful of the fact that the chairman has given me a budget, and I'll, I'll stick to that budget as much as I possibly can. But I'll also 
big bar and steel. I'll, I'll be creative if I possibly can. I'll obviously go and knock at his door any time I possibly think I can and just say I need another fullback or I need a centre half or I need a striker. Um, I've just had a good ten minutes with uh, with the chairman and um, he came to both games. You know, he came to the Tamworth game and the um, and the Telford game and. I asked him for an appraisal, bang, gave me an appraisal in about 20 minutes and you know he was absolutely on the money. So he knows his football and he knows where we need to to improve, uh, but so do I. But the biggest improvement that we've got this year is that the seven players that we brought in have brought a mentality in that I think playing for Kidderman Saharias is a pleasure. It shouldn't be a, a chore, it shouldn't be uh, something that you fear. Uh, it, should, it should be something that you enjoy if you get three or four thousand in here on a weekend. It's because you're playing the right type of football and you're at the right part of the end of the division. And I think that's the, the players that were brought in. But there's still a little gap in possibly the, the finished article, which is that goals for defending, that goals for attacking, whichever the case may be. And um, Amari re-signing, I think, was a good, good, a fantastic signing. And so was Ashley Hemmings. And I think they've got ability at, at the level that we're at to, to create. I think. Seb Thompson is coming through at a nice, nice rate. Uh, where if opportunities come along, he's very dynamic, uh, and I think you'll have a chance. Kobe Hall's coming on. You know, he's only a young pup. He's only 17 year old, and I'm not saying that we're going to put all the weight of scoring and finishing games off on their on their shoulders. But we've got creative creativity behind that, and creativity with um, with finite detail. I'm talking about Maz Kuya, you know. Jack Lambert, which we all already know, Malik Cardigan, you know, there's three or four players that can actually open the door. And when you open the door, I'm talking about getting to that final, not final third, getting to that final six yards and, and putting some quality into the box. So I think that's what the Kidderman Saharias fans will witness. And hopefully we'll have somebody at the end, on the end of that, that final piece of the jigsaw. At this level, I always think for managers as well, it's so much of it now at this stage, what a couple of weeks out really, is about keeping your nerve because still there are clubs in the Football League, League One, League Two, and obviously in the National League who've got players in on trial who ultimately will spin them off, so to speak, and more players will become available. Uh, they always will. Uh, I'm, I've, honestly, I've been around the block a few times and uh, I've been in that situation where I've just come into the managerial. Uh, part of the game and uh, I've been nervous as hell and panicking at this stage of the season and at the end of the day you know you do your business it'll happen if you don't do your business it won't happen and I think we've got such a, a very decent setup here in terms of the backroom staff in terms of the re recruitment side of things um, got great experience in you know Neil McDonald alongside me and and uh, Dean Holdsworth, you know, as a, a director of football or a chief egg or whatever you want to call them, you know, it, it, but the help doesn't matter what the the name tag is it attached to them. But we've got a, you know, I've got a chief scout, and the chief scout's going out to games week in and week out, so is everybody. And we're watching players and we're looking at players, and if we bring players in, it's because they're going to improve us. And everybody in the ground will want to, oh, have we got that striker? Have we got the guy that's going to score 40 goals next year? Absolutely, but. They cost money and people don't let them go readily. So you've got to sometimes be clever and be cute in your, in your work. And maybe sometimes an under 21 or an under 23 uh, or a young boy might come through and, and surprise you. And that's what the game's all about. So, you know, we're not nervous about it. We're not worried about it. Um, we've got the right kind of resilience in terms of the, the, the makeup and, and the DNA of the team for to keep clean sheets, hopefully. Uh, and then maybe we'll just be a little bit more creative in the opportunity coming along, so it'll be a better chance as opposed to a half chance. Uh, and if that's the case, then hopefully there might still be one or two players out there that will finish it off for. Finally, you said uh, you've had a good mix of pre-season games. Um, I, I guess I'm guessing the matches against like Telford, Tamworth, Mickleover are just one level below. They're the ones that you know that's the sort of level that you're at really. Great to play Cardiff City, mm. but Newport County be a good test, though, won't it? Really? Newport and Stoke, uh, and we've got you know Villa uh, behind closed doors. They'll all be good tests, they'll all be 90 minutes of, uh, of hard work and uh, I was asked the other day about match fitness, can you actually get match fitness without matches? And uh, I've been through the whole range of, of sports science and the physicality of the game way back in the day when I was doing pre-season as a player and then going through it as a coach and a manager and, and so on and so forth and, and the sports science side of things nowadays you can actually get as near as damn it to, to match fitness without playing matches. 
but a player is always a little bit nervous if he hasn't had two or three full games under his belt. So regardless of what quality um, the football league teams that we're going to be playing bring to the party, we've still got to get through that 90 minutes. So even if you go a goal behind, if you go two goals behind, you haven't got to let the game run away with itself, you know, and, and, and finish too early. Sometimes games games can be dead and buried after 60, 65 minutes. But I think we've got the mentality in, in the group that there's my who's in town and Cardiff was proof of that. There's my who's in town, it's just a name, it's another team, it can be a 23s, it can be a 21s, it can be a full team. You're playing to win a game of football and you're playing there to stay in the game of football if you're up against it and that's what we'll be doing. We're working at the mentality as well as the physicality and you know Newport will be a good test and all three of them will be good tests and be, the players will be ready, there's no doubt in my mind, come the 10th of August for Darlington away. And it is all about picking for Darlington away, isn't it really? That's all, that's all we're worried about, really worried about. You know, the next three games, if you get beat 5-0 in every game, the kiddie supporters might be thinking, oh, panic stations, what's going to happen? It's a totally different ball game come the 10th of August, guaranteed. And I'll, I'll finish with this because I remember at Bolton Wanderers, we went to full pre-season conceding 6-0, 6-1 in, in five or six of the games. We made one signing on the Thursday before the first game. And that was Isaiah Rankin from Bradford City. And we played Burnley the first game of the season. We drew that game and we went 11 undefeated. We hadn't won a game. We hadn't done anything right in pre-season. And all of a sudden the business end started and we 11 games undefeated, we got promoted that year. So pre-season is a means to an end. And I think our means to an end is that we've got a fit squad and hopefully 100% fit come 10th of August.